Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Philip Securities Research Morning Call for 4th of September 2023. For today, we have quite a few stock counter updates and technical analysis updates. And as usual, uh, we would end the session with Singapore Weekly, week 36. So without further ado, let us get started with Salesforce results. So uh, this morning, we released Salesforce second quarter 2024 results with the title Profit Outlook Raised. Overall, uh, the results were in line with our expectations, with first half 2024 revenue coming in at 49% of our full year forecasts. Uh, however, PatMe exceeded at 55% of our forecasts, mainly because of uh, lower expenses due to cost-cutting initiatives. So moving on to the positives, in the second quarter, total revenue, it grew by about 11% year over year. And this was mainly because of uh, continued strong demand for its product offerings. Uh, and uh, for instance, the core products like Sales Cloud and Service Cloud, uh, they reported a revenue growth of about 12% year on year. So these two products, they basically help to uh, companies to uh, automate and manage their sales tasks and to provide uh, better customer management services, so, uh, customer management engagement. So, uh, and uh, meanwhile, uh, the data cloud, it's the fastest growing segment for Salesforce. Uh, it grew by about 16% year over year. And the, main, the two main contributors for this particular segment, uh, data cloud segment, were uh, MuleSoft, which provides tools for automations, and Tableau, which is basically an analytics platform. Uh, moving on to the second positive, the current remaining performance obligation, uh, it grew by about 12% year over year to $24.1 billion. And this is a key metric uh, mainly because uh, this represents the uh, future contracted sales that are expected to be recognized uh, over the next uh, 12 months. And the strength was mainly because of uh, uh, continued demand for its customer 360 offerings. And also uh, uh, the company, it has been uh, focusing on cross-selling into its existing customer base. For instance, uh, over the, ma management, the management, uh, over the earnings call, they said they highlighted that uh, the top 10 deals in the quarter, uh, out of the top 10 deals, uh, six deals, uh, it, it included more than five uh, cloud products. And uh, the company, it has also been witnessing a low attrition rate of about 8%. Uh, moving on to the third positive company, uh, the company's focus on uh, profitability, it has been paying off. Uh, for instance, the operating expenses in the quarter, they fell by about 7% year on year. And this led to an operating margin of about 17% uh, as compared to 3% in the second quarter of previous year. And this is mainly because of high operating leverage. For instance, the headcount, the number of employees, they dropped by about 11% on a year-over-year -year basis. So moving on to the outlook, a uh, company said that uh, it's still uh, witnessing some pressure from uh, from the macro uncertainties, like uh, it's still witnessing elongated sales cycle and deal size compression. Uh, however, uh, the uh, uh, the IT consumer spending it's uh, it's expected to be have been stabilized now. So for the third quarter, the company uh, it expects a revenue growth of about eleven percent year over year, and this includes a foreign exchange headwind of about hundred million dollars. In terms of its bottom line, uh, the company expects its earnings per share to grow uh, by about 386% uh, year over year. And uh, this is mainly because of low expenses, like it has been focusing uh, to reduce its uh, staff ba uh, employee base, as well as through careful sales and marketing spend and real estate consolidation. So, uh, however, for the full year guidance, the company, it actually uh, raised, boosted its revenue guidance by about $150 million. And this was, we believe, mainly because uh, recently the company, uh, it, had, uh, it had announced that in August, it would raise the prices for most of its products by an average of 9%. Uh, however, management highlighted that it should not have a significant impact this year, uh, mainly because uh, it would, uh, it would uh, hit the customer base over the next two or three years at the time of renewals of the existing customer base. So uh, in terms of its bottom line, the company also uh, raised its uh, uh, earnings outlook from $2.68 to $3.51. So uh, in terms of its valuation, uh, we uh, we maintain our accumulate recommendation. However, we increased our target price to $242 from the $226 previously. 
and this was mainly because we raised a, a, a profit estimates by about 30 percent so uh, this was mainly to reflect the price increase and lower expenses so overall for salesforce we believe that uh, it's well positioned uh, mainly to benefit from cloud-based digital transformation trends and we also believe that uh, the company uh, it should uh, uh, it should uh, view strong demand and the demand for its products it should continue to pick up mainly because of ai integrations into its most of its products for instance it has integrated ai into a sales cloud and service cloud its core products so they can help to generate uh, automate uh, sales emails as well as to generate automate uh, replies for uh, the customer service agents so uh, these tools it should help to increase boost it, the demand for its products so that's all for Salesforce. Uh, I would now like to pass on to Glenn for uh, Silver Lake. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Ambrish. Yep, so for Silver Lake, they released their results, their fourth quarter and their full year results sometime uh, about a week ago. <clears throat> so for their, just a few key highlights. Firstly, their fourth quarter 23 earnings of 36.4 million ringgit. They were below our estimates with their full year 23 earnings at 87% of our estimates. The 24% year-on-year dip in earnings, it came mainly from lower than expected project-related revenue and higher than expected tech expense. The FY23 DPS was 14% lower year-on-year -year at 0 0.6 cents. Um, okay, so I'll just jump straight to the positives. The first positive being that their recurring revenue, it rose 7% year-on-year. And it comprises the recurring revenue comprises of their maintenance and enhancement services, insurance ecosystem transaction and services, and their retail transactions processing revenue. Their maintenance and enhancement services grew by 6% year on year to 140 million ringgit. And Silver Lake said that they expect this segment to continue its growth as new maintenance contracts and support will commence when current projects are completed and successfully handed over to clients. For the second segment, which is their insurance, ecosystem, transactions, and services revenue, it rose by 19% year-on-year as there was broad-based growth across all segments, ranging from vehicle claims processing to insurance policies processing. For their third segment, which is the retail transactions processing, it grew 20% year-on-year, mainly due to increased usage for their cloud-based retail solution, Agora Cloud. And as this is a usage-based model, they have seen increased usage from their existing base of clients as well as their new clients whom, whom they have signed up. But the second positive is, the, is that their order backlog remains very healthy and their project pipeline is currently at 1.5 billion ringgit with contract wins of 93 million ringgit in the fourth quarter and an order backlog of 223 million ringgit on the verge of closing for the first quarter of FY24. Furthermore, they do expect revenue from their multi-million 10-year uh, Mobius deal with a client Malaysia to come in in FY24. For the negatives, the first negative being that their operating expenses were 13% higher year-on-year, -year, mainly due to the current inflationary environment, as well as to support growth in the new delivery of services, projects, and future-proving for long-term growth and sustainability. Their increase, this increase was seen across all segments, uh, across segments such as their staff costs uh, due to additional headcount and finance costs as well as foreign exchange currency loss. But their expense over revenue ratio was kept at 33%. For the second negative is that their project-related revenue fell 4%. So this consists of two segments. The first one being their software licensing revenue, it fell 54% year-on-year, mainly due to the progression of actual project delivery varying from quarter to quarter, which results in a lag in revenue contribution. And the second segment, which is their software project services revenue, this was this offset the loss, uh, the, the declines for the first segment as it rose by 42% year on year, as there was additional revenue recognized from recently closed contracts from countries such as Thailand, UAE, and Malaysia. For the outlook, the the outlook for Silver Lake, it's uh, they seem to be building. Uh, they, they look to be building a higher quality order book, and they currently have a tender book of one point five billion ringgit going to FY twenty four, with more than half of it coming from its the cloud core banking system, which is Mobius and Symmetry. And you know, while this initial revenue for these two 
systems might seem smaller as compared to their legacy core banking systems such as SIPs. We do expect this to improve their recurrent fees. So, so as I mentioned earlier, this Mobius and Symmetry, they are cloud banking software and, it, and the banks uh, do not need to pay or purchase or manage hardware assets, assets and this results in lower initial costs, hence lower initial revenue for Silver Lake. But there will be a con need for continuous enhancement and maintenance for these systems, which will improve the quality of Silver Lake's order book with the bulk of growth coming from recurrent fees and not just lump sum fees. The second uh, outlook that we see is that we see visible growth from new product cycles and they have signed the, the deal with one of the largest banks in Thailand as well as their first multi-million 10-year Mobius deal with the client in Malaysia. And with this collaboration with the Thailand bank as well as the client in Malaysia, it has shown that the proof of concept for Mobius and we could see more inquiries for Mobius for the rest of uh, 2023 as well as going to 2024. And there's also a potential for replacing the core banking systems with Mobius as several legacy core banking systems approach the end of life. And now banks have a sort of a fewer limitations to adopt a fully based core, cloud-based core, sorry. So as such, we maintain a buy rating on Tivolik with a lower target price of 38 cents. And we lower as we lower FY24 earnings by 20%, as we lower the revenue estimates and increased tax estimates for FY24. And our target price is packed to 20 times PE. So that's all I have for Silver Lake. I'll now hand it over to Peggy. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Glenn. Uh, so for our behavior in the technical pause, so for S&P 500, uh, last week we saw a breakout of the short-term downtrend resistance line shown in chart. So currently it's a bit sideways around the 4,520 uh, level. So uh, if we do continue the upwards momentum, we could see potentially see the price gap at 4,570 uh, being filled. And there could uh, be some sort of short-term resistance for this week. So for this week, uh, resistance will come in between 4,530 to 4,570, while support could be at 4,450 to 4,490 area. Uh, next slide. So we release our technical monthly uh, report for August this morning. So uh, this table actually captures the summary of the various asset classes' performance. So for August, it was mostly a uh, red month for almost all the ETFs except for oil. So the decline was between about 1% to about 11%, while oil, the oil ETF XOP gained close to 4%. In terms of the current trend-wise, uh, most of them are in range consolidation, uh, less the US Treasury bond as well as gold. Well, uh, looks like they are still continuing on with their current downtrend. In terms of outlook wise, it is it's the same as well. Uh, the the most of the asset classes could see some range bound in trading as well as you know, consolidation in September. While the US Treasury bond and gold could see uh, their bearish momentum continue as they trade their respective uh, downtrend channels. Uh, next slide. Okay, so to begin with the the. S&P 500 ETF, uh, which is VOO, uh, currently it's, it's, it retraced uh, from the main uptrend channel resistance in August, as well as we broke down uh, this short-term uptrend channel as well. So currently uh, it's finding support from swing low uh, form in, in June. Uh, so with that, we could see then we currently are bouncing from it. So we could see some sort of uh, possible range uh, trading for now, where there's some resistance if comes to pass around the 420 area, which was the, the recent swing price. Uh, next slide. Then for the uh, 7 to 10 year treasury bond ETF, uh, currently it's still continuing on its downtrend momentum. You can see in the chart where after the rejection of the, the retest of the bearish flag breakdown, it's still continuing uh, trading in the downtrend uh, channel. Uh, currently there was a bounce around the Above the close to the $92 mark, uh, which was a swing, they were, they were, where there was a swing low, but currently it's still in the downtrend channel. So, with that, looks like the downtrend momentum is still uh, intact for, for now. Next slide. Then, as for the gold ETF, uh, Spider Gold Mini Shares Trust, um, there was a breakdown of an uptrend support line, uptrend support line in August. Uh, then, currently, it did a retest for now. So, currently, uh, you need to see the reaction point around the at the current price level, which is around 
uh, $38.50. Uh, there we see the, the downtrend channel resistance as well as a retest of the, the support line. So if we see continuation of the bearish momentum, we could see some rejection from there and maybe form a bit of a range uh, this month if the recent support uh, around the thirty-seven fifty mark holds. Uh, next slide. Then as for the oil and gas uh, ETF, uh, it was quite strong. It was uh, the, the gainer, it was the only gainer last month. So continuing on from the, the range breakout around the $120 mark, uh, price went up to retest the uptrend support line as well as the wedge resistance. That was at around 148 Uh, Currently, it's a bit sideways around the $150, $152 level. So that could, uh, at this point, there could be some resistance coming in. But uh, if, let's say that, does continue then okay at this point there could be some resistance coming in and if you do see some form of retracement back into the wedge uh that could test the 140 dollars level for some possible support yeah next slide then as for bitcoin uh after quite a long period of consolidation since uh, june there was a breakdown below the uptrend support line in august it was quite a big decline and we retested the June low support, which is around the thirteen dollar level. So with that, uh, if this support, if this level holds, uh, we could see some sort of range bound trading, but resistance should come in around the upon the retest of above fifteen forty, which was the previous showing support. Yeah. Next slide. Uh, then for Singapore equities, um, it was there was a pullback, uh, from the rising wedge resistance. It was around close to about three point four. Uh, then currently we are still finding support around 3.2. Um, positive thing is that uh, the rising wedge pattern is still holding. Uh, looks like we have a, a higher low being formed. So for now, it looks like still possible consolidation until we see a break up or break down. Uh, then that will dictate the next, the next uh, major move for, for Singapore equities. Uh, next slide. And last but not least, uh, for Hang Seng, um, there was a... After, Quite a long period of range, uh, but there was a, a breakdown of the uptrend support line. Uh, and then following which there was a retest. So uh if we can't get above back into the, the range itself, then that could see we could see some form of weakness continue for, for Hang Seng this month, uh, where we could see some form of range range trading ahead. Yeah. So uh next slide. So that's all for the the technical monthly, then in terms of individual counters, uh, I have Amazon. So Amazon is a technical buy $134.91. Uh, take profit levels can be set $146 and $158. The stop loss at $130. So the stop loss goes at $130 and 12 cents on Friday. So for in terms of the chart wise, uh Amazon recently we have pulled back from the uptrend channel resistance. Then uh it found it found support at the channel support. Uh then as well as a retest of $134 level, which was a prior uh, horizontal resistance now acting as support. So with that, uh, looks like we have a bounce and could see potential continuation in terms of the midterm uh, uptrend. Then could potentially test $146, which was a swing high back in August of last year. It could be the first resistance level, followed by $150, which is another swing high. Uh, that was I think that was around April of last year. Yeah, that could be the next resistance level. Uh, so that's all for me. I'll pass on my time to Peggy to talk about uh, Coco Lab. Thanks. Thank you, Zane. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Darren is ill today, so I'll talk on his behalf on Coco Land. Uh, they had an endless briefing last week. Uh, the company, as um, we all know, they are the property investment and property developer. They had a very sizable land bank in Singapore mostly on the mid to high end um, residential uh, and with a very dominant uh, position in the Lentor area. Okay. The part of the earnings was driven by property development, although in terms of total assets, uh, more than 50% are, are in property, uh, invested in properties, investments. They, their long-term goal is to be able to derive recurring income they have a, a also exposure in China and Malaysia, but still Singapore forms more than 70% of its total uh, asset value. The re revenue 
and um, profits all uh, mostly driven by the pro pro uh, progressive recognition of sales for the residential developments. Mayor mentioned Midtown Modern, you know, Lentown Modern as well. And they also uh, had fair value gains. Uh, they had a, they a smaller fair value gains and a higher uh, interest cost this, uh, in for the, uh, this financial year. The, the going forward in 24, 25, FY24 and a little bit in 25, will still continue to be driven by property development in, uh, profits. Um, the yeah, the office wise, the the two landmarks are Coco Tower and uh Coco Midtown. Uh, both have recorded very high occupancy. Um, they. The even what surprised us is that even the Chang, Kwako Changfeng City South Tower project in Shanghai had a very good take up of 95%. Okay, uh, this is an integrated development with office, retail, commercial. Okay, the they have start to recognize some contribution from Kwako Midtown. The they will be more significant going forward as the the property stabilizes as the tenant uh, move, move in uh, gradually. The outlook for them is that they will continue to replen replenish land bank uh, in Singapore, but they will, look, they will be looking at locations where there's very strong owner occupation demand rather than investment demand. This, the China, for them, the de development profits is still weak. Uh, uh, they are slowly uh, resuming construction and also the sale of the second block. In this, the properties are mostly in Chongqing. And they also see uh, some pockets of opportunity in Shanghai, which they will they look to, if there is opportunity to replenish land bank, they might do so in Shanghai. The uh, company offers a dividend yield of 4%, which uh, uh, looks uh, attractive. That's all I have for Coco Land. I'll move on to the next period on the ground. Okay, uh, RENS. Uh, this is a uh, Restaurant operator in Singapore, all the outlets, more than 70 uh, F&B outlets are in Singapore. Uh, they also operate a central kitchen in Singapore and a procurement center in Japan as they specialize in Japanese cuisines. They, uh, from the central kitchen, they also produce uh, convenient, uh, ready-to-eat meal, uh, meals for convenience stores such as uh, 7-Eleven. The, they had a very weak second half. Uh, I, I'm... I decided to show half and half um, numbers here to illustrate the the weaker very weak uh, second half twenty three which lasts from April, which which is from January to June this year. The they reported a face a slowdown in footfall, uh, from April to June, uh, after the revenge dining that we saw in uh, early last year, in. On top of that, they face intense competition as malls uh, add a lot more space for FMB operators. They so what they uh, do to counter this is to have a uh, to add more quick service concept. These are the ones that that uh, requires less cooking on the at the outlet, less sitting space. Uh, the customers come order, pick up, and go. So there's a quicker turnaround. And they also sense a, a higher customer's preference for this type of new concepts. Especially they had the Mr. Donut, which is really popular. Okay. The they saw the margins chip being chipped off by the surge in manpower and utility, utility costs. The gross margin was able to main, be maintained as they raised uh, prices to cope with the higher materials costs. But but employee and utilities. Uh, cost shot up by 17% and 14% respectively. That hurts their EBITDA margin. So what they do is to utilize more of the central kitchen to prepare the food that so that they it's easier to recruit staff at the outlets, staff that do not need the uh, 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 cooking, uh, much cooking skills uh, uh, can be easily uh, engaged. And they and but still, wage costs are pressure will persist because of the progressive wage scheme that Singapore has introduced, and the workers' quota is coming down uh, going forward. 
So they, for them, they will continue to add more QSR outlets to drive revenue growth. Uh, they, they think the if the there's a slowdown in the spending and economy condition, the local ro lower ticket size for QSR uh, will we continue to draw customers uh, and the convenience food also will they will be catering to the mass market consumers. I think the sentiment for RES, RENS is also reflected in other FMB players in Singapore, uh, listed ones in Singapore. Thank you. I'll move on to the next. Thanks, Ambrish. Yes, Samudara Shipping uh, went to meet with the company. Okay, this is a sh shipping line. They operate mainly feeder services uh, for intra-Asia, Indian continent, subcontinent, Far East and Middle East, Me meaning it's around this route. They don't do the, the long-haul uh, liner, liner service. Uh, feeder service means that the, the liner service, the big ones like your CGA, CGM, your MERS, uh, MSC, they will sail the ocean, come to a port in, the, in, in Asia, then unload the cargoes, then then a break bulk and, and feeder service operators like Samudaran will pick up this and, and ship to the other regional ports in, in Asia where the water is shallower so you, you can you only deploy the, sm the, the smaller vessels. And so Samudara operates and owns about 24 uh, container ships. They also own four chemical tankers and one gas tankers which they own lease to operators. So they, their objective is to maintain one third own one third on short term lease, short term charters, one term on long term charters. So that when the market, if the market were to turn uh, not favorable, they will just uh, give up the short term those on short term charters, and and which which is a faster way for them to adapt to a changing market environment. Uh, I think a uh, uh, point to note is that continental freight rates have come down. Uh, what what. 50% from first half of 22. Uh, during COVID, uh, there was a shortage of vessels, port congestions, so freight rates were, were exorbitantly high, uh, exceptionally high, and all these have, have uh, returned due to normal, though freight rates right now is still uh, at a single digit above the peak COVID level. The Industry liftings on the other hand have fallen by eleven percent year on year. Therefore, less cargoes, uh, uh, less demand, less cargo, uh, going on the vessels. So, uh, this this is not, not the worst. Uh, the worst thing is the, uh, is that there is a record new building orders in the pipeline. This will be a, a long term challenge for next two years. The total container ship order book currently stood at 7.1 million TEUs, or about 30% of the existing tonnage. The last time we had a peak was in 2008, that was 6.6 .6 million TEUs of order book, or 60% of them at that time on the, for the capacity of those fleet on the water. Okay. Uh, so the expected delivery for next two years is 2.34 and 2.83 million TEUs uh, for this year and next year. And it, that compares with 1.1 million for 2021 and 2022 each. Then on the average from 2001 to 2020, we have an annual about 970,000 TUs added every year. So you can see the, the, the size of the increases in this year and next year is going to be huge. Okay. The, so this is a very typical shipping cycle. Uh, during the good times, the shipping uh, companies will accumulate a lot of cash flows, have bumper, Profits and what they do next, they will, will put that into ordering new vessels. Then after that, there's a uh excess supply, then the decline in the freight rates. So so this this uh fish and famine cycle has never exactly uh, changed for the shipping industry. What to add to the pressure is that the IMO has a set has a target to reach net zero greenhouse gas emission by twenty fifty. So this this uh raise our operating costs for for all the all the carriers, the uh, they need to attain fleet de decarbonization. So for the smaller vessels, it's harder to do this because if you want to do 
uh, decarbonization, you can actually use dual fuel, which means you need more space on the on the deck, or you install a scrubber to so that you can continue to use the uh, the high sulfur fuel, but the scrubbers will also take take up space on your deck. So so it actually takes away some of your slots uh, available on that and means you have less capacity available to meet demand. Okay. So overall, we think we, we could see a repeat of 2015 and 2016. Uh, during that time, there was many new build deliveries in 2014. Then they saw a price war in 2015, 2016, and then we also see a bankruptcy of Hanjin shipping. And so, uh, in 2016, Samadara was in the red. Just, just a reference. I'm not, not providing any forecast here, but uh, maybe something to keep in mind as you look into uh, uh, companies in the shipping sector currently. Thank you. I'll move on to the next. Okay, ISO team. Okay, they have a results uh, briefing too. Uh, the year end is 30th of June. So I attended the briefing. The first time, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the revenue crossed 100 million again. Uh, and then they turn, uh, they turn around this quarter, this half. But uh, this out, out of these numbers of out of this one point four million, two point four million is is from a, a, a gain from disposal of three loss making businesses into a fund. So when they, they dispose, they transfer this as these three businesses to the fund. They recognize the two point four million mark to market, mark to market uh, gain. So this. It's, it's, it's an accounting entry, right? It's, yeah. Um, the and also they 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 deconsolidate these three loss making entities, businesses. So therefore, the the losses are not reflected in their uh, numbers anymore. The auditors deem that they have lost control. They are no longer has control of these entities, so they don't need not uh, consolidate. Then also they they. To us that they had already completed and delivered all the low margin projects that they secured pre-COVID at the at the pre-COVID prices. So so and, and costs have all risen. So they have those projects are already completed and done with. And during this year also they, they did uh, some cost rationalization efforts. Okay. The the thing to know is the value of the three businesses. Uh, mark to market is at three point five million, uh, sing dollars. So I'm not sure going forward whether it's going to be marked up or marked down. But by my this is this potential. Uh, if there is going to be any impairment, probably up to this value. Yeah. Do they have a record order book on hand currently? One hundred ninety four million. Uh, not not really jumping for joy here because all the construction companies you you talk to will have record order books. It's because most of them have faced delay. They can't. They can't get work. Uh, workers. They can't. They they have to comply with stricter rules. So progress. Work progress has been slow. Okay. But but they they told us there's no more no no margin legacy projects in this hundred ninety four million. It, uh, in July just uh they they just had a one for one rights issue at three cents per share. And they raised 20, 10 million. That helps to lower the net gearing after this rights issue to 0 0.75 times. Still a very high level, in my opinion. If you uh, draw if I draw attention to the table, the operating cash flow and free cash flows are negative. Um, because they are the works are mainly for town councils and other public projects. Right? So the we, we probably see very low risk of uh, uh, no correction release. But the the issue here is that uh, there's a no shortage of inspectors, building inspectors to go around and verify jobs work done and sign off. So if you not sign off, then you cannot build your customers. So this delay is a dragging on the cash flow of, of the of construction companies. And based on their their current uh um uh, their, their current book value, it looks Difficult for them to sustain a, a, an order, a, a, a revenue of hundred million and above. So, so they they very really had to slow down the 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 uh, or the work or 
they, they must have stronger uh, cash collection uh, uh, momentum. Okay, the management told us that they think they will see a stronger recovery in FY24 and a higher margins from existing works orders on hand. But uh, like other construction companies, they are faced with rising costs from wages, short of dorm beds, dormitory beds, and a reduction in the workers' quota and higher levy from, from January next year. So this is a sentiment for the construction sector and currently in Singapore. I'll move on to the uh, uh, next one. Thanks. Okay, Joe Energy. Uh, Joe Energy is a coal miner. Is uh this they, they recently draw a lot of attention because they they announced two acquisitions which are uh, which it looks uh really too big for them yeah the they have a quota right now to produce eight million uh tons per year the the coal are the low the low energy coal uh four thousand two hundred uh a uh, uh, good energy with about six thousand six thousand eight. A high energy, uh, which means uh, you 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 need more, or, or you need to blend with the higher energy in order to to produce uh higher energy output. They have higher energy output. Okay, this this uh first half numbers was uh affected by the uh, uh ASP was down, uh output was down, uh also they had a higher strip ratio so that pulls up their cash cost to fifty dollars. US dollar per ton and ASP is sixty five point eight uh, dollars per ton. So the the spread between ASP and and cash costs have narrowed, and that explains why uh, net profit is down by seventy four percent. Okay, and also at the same time in September last year, Indonesia raised their royalty rates for coal mining to to between five to eight percent from three percent uh previously. The company has net cash of one hundred forty million US dollar asset. End of June, a, a, a very sharp drop from December, two hundred thirty million. And that's that, and yeah, but uh, they announced uh, an acquisition of up to seventy five percent of an in Indonesian listed coal mining company, PT Golden Eagle Energy, for one hundred ninety seven million US dollar. So that's not very far from the current market cap. Uh, they their average price they paying is one thousand two hundred fifty five rupiah per share. Also above the market price, and PTGE net asset net equity was sixty three point nine million US dollar as the end of uh, December twenty two. Uh, net profit was twenty two point eight million. So the acquisition PE for FY twenty two is eleven times. Uh, it looks high compared with Joe's current uh PE about it. Eight times, and because of the big premium they pay over the net assets, there will be a, a big uh, goodwill. And sorry, so too many ends, but to to just to highlight also, uh, FY twenty two has been a very good year for all the coal mining companies, including PT, uh, uh, GE. Okay. The GE has a reserve of 331 million of coal and resource of 356 million. They have they produced 3 million tons last year. Okay. Um, for this acquisition, the Joe had obtained a 220 million loan from Ben Mandiri to pay for it, to partially pay for it. Um, they don't know, they, they won't tell us what is the interest cost of this. But uh, judging by what even Adaro, the 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 the, the, the most efficient, the best coal mining company in the world, is, uh, we think this cost, this loan is will not come below uh seven percent interest rate. Okay. The at the same time, Joe ben announced a venture into e motorcycle in Indonesia. They they are extending a four million US dollar loan at twelve percent uh interest rate to charge Asia private rated. This loan will be for 24 months. It's convertible, convertible into shares in Charge Asia at a pre-money valuation of 40 million US dollar. So they have an option to invest a further 36 million to become a major shareholder. The co-investors are Decloud uh, and X 
and their Joe's Energy X uh, independent director. They, they need shareholders approval when they exercise the option to invest the further $36 million. Uh, and Charge Asia had delivered more than 1,000 motorcycles in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam. But they won't tell us whether how much charge, what is the profitability of Charge Asia. So we assume it's still loss making then. Okay. Uh, for this coal mining industry, maybe well, one thing to keep in mind is that China has resumed coal import from Australia from April this year after they be, became friends again. And who knows out is uh, Indonesia. Uh, as China still has supplies, ready supplies from Russia. Right? So, so for uh, going forward, uh, for the coal mining sector, we think the, the ASP could be, for Indonesia, could be, could be uh, under pressure. Uh, the 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 how how the coal com, co mining companies will be able to weather, weather this is in controlling the their cash costs. That means the, to cut down on their strip ratio. So the for for Joe Energy, they they think they they will keep the the strip ratio for first half twenty three will be will be maintained for the rest of the year. So yeah, it's a. Is is uh yeah the, the, the sector is also under some pressure. Thank you. Uh, I'll move on. Thanks, Ambrish. Yeah. Okay, Paul is away on this week, so I am doing this. Um, uh, so will not be as good as him, but I I try. Okay. Okay, Singapore manufacturing PMI. Uh, we saw last week forty nine point nine versus the July forty nine point eight. A a tech improvement. It's a third month of improvement, but still a contractionary. But still, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, it's the, the direction is, is uh, positive. In China, and uh, National Bureau of Statistics came out with the manufacturing PMI too. That there's a, also a, uh, an improvement from July with 49.7. But uh, uh, to key to note is the output for the uh, output wise, is uh fifty one point nine, is is a uh, further improvement from July fifty point two, and new orders which is more significant has turned expansionary to fifty point two. The China has also rolled out property supportive policies for tier one and tier two cities. Uh, uh, in reaction, Beijing and Shanghai they lowered their mortgage down payment for home buyers and mortgage refinancing. And Shenzhen and Guangzhou also broadened the definition of first-time mortgage, so allowing more people to be able to borrow uh, at a lower interest rate, and be able to borrow and borrow at a lower interest rate. Okay. P the PBOC is, will also, from September 15, cut the commercial bank foreign exchange deposits. What this means is that it will have the impact of uh, supporting the remaining P and, and, and yeah, keep the value, improve on the value of the remaining P. Okay. In the, on the US side, the, the data is a bit uh, uh, mixed, but we don't think it points to any, any uh, retraction in inflationary pressure. The non farm payroll climbed 187,000 in August. Uh, July was revised down to 157 compared to previously was 187. Now, in August, this, in August, there was a Hollywood actors that went on strike. So 18,000. Uh, jobs were, were taken out from here, was taken out. And Yellow, the trucking companies, uh, went into bankruptcy. 30,000 workers lost their job. So this, uh, so some events like this, uh, one off. The labor force wise has expanded. You see more people joining the labor force. So that pushed up the unemployment rate to 3.8%. So some of the headlines in the in the media just mentioned this 3.8%, but it's, uh, uh, in, in actual phase, the, the 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 base is larger now. Okay, the and this is the highest since February twenty twenty two. So so yeah, the you know, average hourly year earnings is climbing by a slower zero point two percent month on month. But if you average out with July, the annualized level is four percent. So it's still not very far from four point three percent. So so um the unemployment rate and the lower. Uh, August uh, hourly earnings 
shouldn't be read as a sign that the we the interest rate hike might not happen in September. So we still think there could be a, a, a another hike for the September of a 25 basis point. Next slide, please, Embrish. Okay, this is my last slide. Okay. The, so technically, uh, we saw Country Gardens release their, their earnings uh, record for the 8.9 billion RMB loss. And they also uh, raised a rate going concern issue. So uh, the financial institutions will be very cautious towards uh, private lending to private developers. We think they could also trigger some strongest policy response. But uh, can't. Uh, uh, we think the the market will be will hope to see some clear debt restructuring plans by these private the big private developers to, to in order to to be more confident to to, to for the property in, uh, sector to improve. So there will still be uh, we think there will be a still a downturn in the. Uh, property sector. Uh, the in China wise, the, the more property is easing measures, we, we feel that there's more to boost market confidence. The east the uh, home buyers cash flow. Because uh, if you have uh, uh, uh you are able to re refinance at the at the uh, lower mortgage rates or if the down payment is reduced, you actually it's more excess cash for, for you to do other things. So you can it will support domestic consumption, indirectly also support the sale of the existing projects for those that have completed uh, that they can be sold or at least uh, always be or, or for those that are not completed to be to be at least be completed. Okay, so but it will not encourage new new land acquisitions uh, and new land acquisitions will be very 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 muted. Because in Singapore, wise, uh, first September is a, is a, a. It was a presidential election, but it's also a, a, a very, uh, uh, not not a welcome day for for corporates because the wage wage wages are rising, are going up. The minimum income as will be for S pass holders will be raised for renewers to three thousand five hundred. Uh, for the finance sector and three thousand for non finance, and tier one levy has also been risen. The CPF income ceiling has also gone up to six thousand three from six thousand. So all this add up to a, a higher employ higher salary bill for for corporates in, uh, operating in Singapore. So these are the events that we have and the webinars. Please join us if you have the time to listen directly to the company and ask them questions. Okay, with that, uh, that's the end of uh this morning's sharing. We can move on to the Q and A. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi, um, Darren is on with our best speaking on his behalf. Yeah, which is the best hospitality rate? Uh, to get exposed to and why. Yeah, so currently our um coverage for hospitality rate is only Capital Land Escort Trust. Uh, yeah, so we like Capital Land Escort Trust because um it has a very diversified and balanced portfolio that gives uh, stability uh, and also like upset exposure to the improving hospitality sector. And is forward booking streaming healthy, supported by the strong demands from both international and do domestic travelers. So the second quarter two three rev par grow by twenty percent young year, to one hundred and forty nine dollar, and it's already at ninety ninety eight percent of the pre pandemic level. Yeah, so we expect the international travelers to pick up international international traveling to pick up. Yeah, as airline capacity is increasing, so. Like real part this year, uh, is very likely to be back to pre-COVID level, and it's also currently trading at a uh, attractive dividend yield of six percent. Yeah, hope it answers your question. And also, uh, okay. there's another question. Like, um, at current high interest rate. 
is rate still a good investment? Also, as rate lost around 8% in July to August, and uh, giving back all the year-to-date um, performance. Yeah, so uh, its strong performance continue to be offset by the uncertainty on the timing of the picking of interest rate. Uh, so like um, quality rates um, remain robust, like their earnings um, is robust, such as uh, some tech rate, uh, CLAS, um, like mentioned, and FCT. Uh, is stable occupancy rate and also positive uh, rental reversion, but mostly uh, is offsetting by the higher funding cost. Also, as rate is currently trading at around 6.5% um, of the dividend yield and also around um, 0.86 um, times uh, price to book, yeah, which is pretty uh, discounted. And Singapore, uh, Singapore's 10-year bond yield is currently uh, 3.1% uh, or, or 3.2%, yeah, which has narrowed the yield spread to around 320 BPs, uh, which is below the uh, long-term average of around 370 BPs. Yeah, so um, this will probably track the near-term performance of S rate. Yeah, hope it answers your question. Yeah, I'll hand over to the rest of my colleagues too for the end, for the question. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Oh. Okay, I think I'll attend the rest. Okay. Yeah, um, okay, I'll go from the top. Uh, this question uh, this is for me. What is your view for SEMCOP, Capital, C Trip, and Venture, please? I'm not sure whether he's talking about technicals, but I'll answer the fundamentals first. Maybe uh, I don't know if Zane has the time to go to. Um, SEMCOP, Capital is more all about energy prices. So, the and also how fast they bring on the new capacity, the new, uh, the new uh, power plants. To, uh, Singapore is uh, is facing uh, the, the, the existing power generation capacity is is uh, reaching the uh, is, a lot of them are, are, are old and, and could be could drop off because of their high the loss of the, the the green requirement so Samco and Capital are very active in importing engaging in importing energy in Singapore so, so now it's a re really a race right now to see who can quickly bring on board the new new generation uh, energy generation capacity in Singapore. So these these two guys, uh, uh, Samco and Capo is really a play on on energy prices. The second thing is uh, to look out for the for this for these two companies is the uh, uh, China, because the the China the land the their property segment is the the segment that always prov provide that exceptional gain for these two for them, especially if they are able to sell off their uh land bank or, or be engage in in uh, with with partners to 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 uh develop uh these land banks. So uh so the the there's an improvement in the in the uh Chinese uh, property sector that will directly flow through to them. Uh though uh, not not yeah it's indirectly flow through to them but uh, not not exactly a direct impact uh because yeah that is really a land bank uh they they are not involved uh, their their involvement in development is mostly through partners uh stream i have uh a bit more uh reservation for them uh uh Keppel has a two two point one percent stake in them and and looks like uh, Still looking to trim their stick uh in C trim. The 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 it's again a, a play on the energy uh prices, but the offshore uh offshore uh exploration or drilling work has, has become more expensive. Uh, on top of that, the 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 cost of funding these projects are higher now. And those majors, all majors who are into these projects are also facing pressure from the 
to from the all these push towards green energy that they they are yeah you 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 they are under pressure to to not involve not uh, invest further into this this uh, uh fossil fuel uh, related uh, energy so so Chin has been looking at uh, jobs like uh, WTIV, wind, wind turbine installation work, and so on. But most of that, almost like sixty percent of the order books are still from Petrobras, Petrobras, which is uh, FPSO, and on this uh, conventional uh, energy. So, so the uh, to sum it up, it's, it's it's not it's not in a very uh, good position. As well, if your your customers are, are are having second thoughts about what they want to do next about the in this in this sector that they are in, so so I I will remain very cautious about C stream. Venture we have two questions on venture, so uh, maybe I address it together. The venture, yeah, the price is really low. Um, many also uh I I mean at the briefing that. Paul went to during the results. Basically, uh, the the message was uh, uh don't don't, hope, don't not, nothing great for second half, and uh, just just get just take your dividend. Yeah, because they have a very very big cash power in their balance sheet. So, so the nothing much to look forward to for for them. They are not uh exactly in the uh, in the uh semiconductor space where. Where you can see a very probably a more direct correlation with AI or or, or AI related uh, 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 link. So so we we think that uh, if uh, you want to have an exposure into tech sector, there are some other stocks might be might look might be more interesting like Franken. Yeah, thank you. I hope I've answered that question. If not, please drop another. You again, I'll try. Okay. Um, okay, which is a better buy, Quacoland or Wind Thai? Thanks, Peggy. Um, Benefit wise, I think Quacoland is stronger. And I think the, the because of their, their, uh, their commercial projects, like the office towers and so on, there's very strong uh, occupancy. The, that, that's, uh, provides them with a very strong recurring cash flow and, and recurring income. And you can see Mid Town coming up and that that further adds on to the to their revenue base and profit base. So therefore we uh, we, we think comparing to Coco Land, we are stronger play compared to Wintai. And Wintai also have exposure in Hong Kong, uh, which they had uh, some write downs in value because of the weak Hong Kong market, Hong Kong property market. Thank you. Mm. What is Samudara's view? Uh, let me open the spreadsheet. When can we when can we expect recovery? Is it a long haul? If already in, do you expect lowering of DPU or dividend? Okay. Uh definitely in the first half this year they already dropped the, the, the uh, dividend to two cents. So the yield for the annualized yield is about 5.4% for, for them. Uh, they have Cost a lot of cash. A net cash is two hundred eighty-five million US dollar. But they also committed to the to vessels to buy vessels and some companies. So the total committed capital is about two hundred two million for for acquisitions. So most of that cash will probably goes towards the new vessels. Uh, and yeah, and they had also two more deliveries, two uh bigger vessels delivery, one in fourth quarter twenty four, one in early twenty twenty five. That will cost them sixty six million. So that, that therefore we don't think they will be you will see any um a big return the dividend return to the last year's level uh, of of like thirty two Singapore cents. Yeah. So definitely the the profit has to, uh, the the dividend has to fall, and you also they also would also pay up, can also pay dividend up to the the, the amount of profit that they earn. 
Thank you. Hi Peggy, would Yang Zijiang shipbuilding be affected by oversupply of vessels similar to Samudra shipping? Thanks. Um, the Yang Zijiang is uh is is a shipbuilder, so the this is uh this is a concern we we always we always at the back of our mind because the container ships has again coming is now dominating the the recent order books again. So we ask them questions on these new vessels, but they are coming from those orders that disappear are from all the, the top five uh, major liners. Uh, the, currently, the top three liners already take up 50% of the entire world's capacity. So you, your orders are from the top five. You, you're probably more uh, certain in terms of like vessels delivery and, and payment. So, but and, and all these new orders are, comes from the, the methanol vessels, which are the green vessels. The, those that meet the IMO standards. So we, we see the orders are mainly for for to to for replacements and, and for larger vessels to 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 replace the, the, the existing older fleet. So therefore for ship for Yang Zijiang we think the, the risk is lower. But if you are a, an operator then you are and a smaller operator then subject to the to the to what the bigger liners are, are planning and doing. So so then your 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 risk levels will, will rise. Yeah. So uh but then the has also told us that they will this this order taking momentum will drop because they already filled up capacity capacity and every year the they should be taking about Two, two, 2 billion orders for one year one year uh, slots so so therefore going forward the uh, gathering of new orders will begin to to uh, uh, slow down thank you yeah is there an error with the samudara share price data in your presentation yes yeah thanks very much for highlighting this yeah i think I, too too many feet on the ground for me so it's, it's share price should be 74 cents, Singapore 74 cents. Thanks. Um, Genting, Genting and Xingxiong, please. What are prospects for growth and stronger dividends? Okay, uh, Xingxiong, uh, Paul covers Xingxiong. Uh, Xingxiong also had a difficult, uh, uh, not a too great uh, re, uh, first half results, uh, also due to higher wage costs. Uh, we so the dividends will probably be maintained. I don't don't think there's a, a significant jump going forward. It's, uh, for Genting, I yeah, the, it really depends on the uh, tourism and the the um uh, the 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 um uh, earnings from the the. Casinos, uh, so Singapore is still getting uh the tourism uh, numbers are still good, but the, but the the visitors from China is is not picking up as as well as expected, and and if you like, if you're thinking if you are looking to invest in a casino or the gaming sector, uh, we think the the Hong Kong listed the uh, the Macau players might be might look more interesting. The valuations are lower, and, and and the growth is more exciting. After after all, they gone through a very bad patch, uh, uh, and uh, they're down on the way up. Yeah, thank you. V zero three is down from this year high by thirty percent. Is it a good buy now? What is your take on this stock? Well, v zero three is venture, so I mentioned it just now. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it. I um, I, I discussed venture just now. Okay. Um, okay, could I, could, could, now could you take over this land list question while I check out Goggles Land Land Bank? Thanks. Yeah, no. Um, yeah. I'll take the land list question. Uh, land list is fundamentally and technically. Uh, should investor opt for 
those five dividend, uh, fundamentally it remains strong. So FY23 revenue and MPI doubled uh, to around 2 million and uh, 200 million and uh, 153.9 million with a healthy retail rental reversion of 4.8%. And the company is also guiding that the high rental reversion is very likely to continue in FY24. And also like always uh, higher upset potential from 313 at Somerset as international travelers are coming back, uh, especially the Chinese. And also like, um, uh, uh, and its uh, portfolio occupancy stays at 99.9% which is very stable. Yeah, and uh, tenant retention is at um, 82.4%. Uh, but one thing to be noted of is, is gearing is already up to 40.6%. And after they refinance the euro loan, the 900 million euro loan is expected to be around 3.5%. Um, uh, yeah, as for the scrap dividend, um, Lendless is currently a blacking of near-term catalyst and its stable performance is very much offset by the increasing funding costs. Yeah, so probably the cash dividend is better. Yeah, hope it answers your question. And also for the manual life, uh, any latest update? Um, there's nothing much new for manual life. So so like after the um the valuation down for 14.6%. Uh, its gearing is still at uh fifty six point seven percent now. Yeah, so based on MAS guideline, is uh gearing, uh was at sixty point two percent. Yeah, but uh, but now it's like um shrinking slightly to fifty nine point seven percent, upon some like uh repayment of the loan. Yeah, they are currently focusing on negotiating with lender to lower the unencumbered gearing ratio uh, to less than 60% and to formulate uh, long-term uh, liquidity plans such as divestment of FIPS and also like pursuing a mandate to uh, divest asset to reduce its debt and also for CAPEX and uh, undertaking some strategic review uh, of the rate including some discussion with uh, US and APEC based groups yeah, and uh, this um, they will like explore some uh asset acquisition, capital injection, and um strategic transactions. Uh, yeah, and um we believe there's no near term uh, visibility. Yeah, the near term visibility is still very low for must. Um, and also like uh depends on their negotiation for the waiver of the financial uh, covenant. Yeah, but until like we get um uh, some clarity, on um, the share price will remain pressured. Yeah, until then. Hope it answers your question. Yeah, I will hand over to Peggy for for, for the rest of the questions. Hey, thanks, Neil. Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi, Peggy. What is the size and value? Coco Lens Land Bank, who would you consider the close competitors? The Coco Land Bank is about $3.6 billion, sing dollar worth. That's about 30% of their total assets. Um, close competitors, well, uh, there will be the, the likes of UOL, CDL, especially when it comes to Singapore property development, where, which are the the Characteristics of the assets are similar, and you also find them at uh, competing for for land bank too in Singapore. So these these are probably the closest competitors. Thank you. Okay, next question: Same cop industry. Any idea why big sell off closing of last Thursday and its decline today as well? Can we catch it? Got on into the MSCI index this on the first of September. So and um, well before the it got in the it was already the um, um the funds were already rebalancing to to get ready for the new for the new uh, share of the of the of the STI. So I guess that's that's the reason why the uh, there's really no more action after that after the the first of September. 
Thank you. Uh, what will the property downturn affect Capital Land who has a big China portfolio? Uh, Capital Land China's portfolio uh, really, uh, if I recall correctly, is a lot of office uh, and a lot of uh, hotels, service apartments. The property downturn in China, uh, yes, of course, the commercials, uh, commercial assets are affected, but uh, there is, it's really um, more because of the confidence in the residential market that is, is driven down the 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 sentiments for for uh, property developers so so we think the the impact on capital land is actually uh, not as not as big as for for the developers uh, in china uh, so it's not it's, yes they have a big china portfolio but not not uh, not not a developing development portfolio. Thank you. Peggy Darren, uh well, Darren is ill today, so I'll take this. What is your perspective on the latest China's China's property market and what kind of influence does it have on Chinese REITs that are listed on XGX? Okay. The 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 government has been rolling out some uh, uh supportive policies to to help the residential market. Um, but most of this supportive policy is really to, to ensure that the buyers who are already paid for the properties can get delivery. That's it. So the, the construction can complete and the buyers can take ownership. Or, or for, for, for yeah, so, so it's, it's to help the Lan Wei Lo to, to get completed and uh, so, so uh, it's really the the objective is to protect the buyers, the home buyers. So, and uh, other things that they they wrote, they wrote out is to lower the uh the change the definition of the uh, first time mortgage. So, in the past, if you had taken a mortgage before, you no longer allow, uh able to take another mortgage in the first year city, even though you have sold away the property that you took for the first mortgage, the mortgage they took on the first property property. So, so they changed the definition, which it's now actually made more sense. So, and then uh, if your household, you have somebody in the household who has never owned a property, then the entire household is considered a first-time buyer. So then you can enjoy a lower down payment rates, a lower mortgage rates. So all these measures are really to help the buyers to free up the, the buyers and owners to free up their, their, their cash flows to, to be able to have more more funds to engage in other activities. So it might not just benefit the property sector, it goes also flow through the others, like consumer sectors, like maybe sports and leisure. So so, so therefore, the the impact could, could be uh, more far-ranging. Uh, on the impact of the Chinese REITs, uh, Chinese REITs are in, listed in Singapore are mostly into the retail malls. Uh, so the... It, there might be a, uh, a spillover effect, positive effect to these reads. But um the the but they see having said that most of the, the reads, the, the malls are are a lot of them are in the tier three or lower tier cities. Or uh, or maybe yeah, so so the the these these cities have very low uh, lower GDP and lower population. So the, the all these property measures um, might not uh, uh could not benefit these these uh, lower tier cities uh because it's already speculative activities in the residential market. I think they will uh, any policies that can help the tier one and tier two might not be able to to be applied to tier three because the tier three already is very relaxed uh, uh property uh buying um uh, the regulations. Yeah. Thanks. I, I hope I answered that question. Um, okay. Refer to Joe Energy's new venture. KAPL delivered more than 1,000 e-motorcycles. What is the size of e-motorcycles market in terms of value and quantity in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam? Uh, they, they mentioned delivered more than 1,000 motorcycles, but I'm not quite sure whether these are pure e-motorcycles 
uh, I can't really find data point for um, for uh, this this uh, charge Asia. Uh, so I also went to look for the value of uh, e-motorcycle in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Vietnam. Uh, also very little reliable data out there. But uh, considering that the, <clears throat> there are also many players who claim that they, they are going into this space, in Singapore, there are already two to three listed companies who said they are selling e-motorcycles. So, so a lot of um, aspiring uh, 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 players out there and the idea of course the, the selling point is that for them to replace existing uh, motorcycles fleet so so I'm sorry I, I don't have answers to this question but when in future when I have more data points maybe I can put out a note to to address uh, Joe's energy's new venture and thank you next question will, di will Kepler divest its stakes in Dynamic is Dynamic similar to c -Trim? Yes, uh, definitely. I think Kepler will want to divest its twenty five percent stake in Dynamax, but uh, but so does the Dynamax major shareholders. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dynamax produces the top side module that is installed on top of a FPSO. So, C Trim probably buys, uh, engage Dynamax to produce this for them too. So so this uh what Dynamax does is a very specialized um. Uh, 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 equipment for, for FPSO uh, in the same space or in gas sector, but not similar to c -trim. Thank you. Hi, Peggy. Gunting has been downward, though we see people are spending more on entertainment. Any reasons? Now, Gunting, if you look at the core income, core net profit, it's still got to be derived from, from, from gambling, from gaming. So you still need the, your high rollers. You still need the uh, the, the people that goes and walk into the casino. Um, so so that the high rollers, if the Macau opens up, they, they will go that way because uh, Singapore is still seen restrictive and our very, very, very heightened uh, the, the, the news about uh, AML and so on is probably to put people uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, let me see how to put this diplomatically. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, it's it's we we we're not go we're not gonna attract the as many high rollers as as we can get from for those going. Most of them will be going to Vegas or or even Macau. So so not yeah. Gunting is not not uh, attractive. Because you you have to look across the the whole entire region, and, and also uh, even Philippines, Cambodia, all these have casinos, uh, and uh, Thailand or something. They're not talking about Thailand, casinos coming up. Thank you. Hi Peggy, in your presentation for Coca-Cola, can you elaborate more on which locations have stronger owner occupants, patient demand compared to investment demand? Uh, this is from the management. Okay, the recall, uh, your investment demand are those will be, of course, the Orchard Road area uh, where you can target the, the foreign foreign buyers. So so the uh, so it's all in the central core area. So the uh, occupant, occupation demand, owner occupation demand will be those that you have uh, integrated integrated infrastructures like like you have schools, you have uh, MRT, you have uh, uh, Strong connectivity to, to to your workplace. So so these are the areas that they are looking into. But uh, yeah. So so they think mental areas is because for them for is linked to uh two two MRT lines. So that that is uh fits the des description of a owner occupation demand. Thank you. Is UL a buy sell or who has it benefited from hotel business or land values? With TPU in mind, is it going anywhere? Uh, sorry, not, not very familiar with you, Elsa. I can't really comment. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the hotel exposure is through Pan Pacific, the, 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 uh, the chain of hotels. In Singapore, they also have a development land bank. 
we they have um uh yeah the they they haven't corrected as much as city development so so the in terms of valuation we think city had uh, gives more potential for for uh, recovery in share price uh dpu i I'm sorry i can't if i say anything here i i probably is is really a guess so yeah i can't comment thanks uh there's a question on Sam Cop Marine share price. So I probably leave it to Zane now. Uh, okay, maybe I take this last one. Hi Peggy, what is the impact of the one billion related address? Which can which counters will potentially benefit or suffer? Thanks for your thoughts. Yeah, I, I don't think I can say this uh openly. Yeah, this this is recorded anyway. But maybe if you want to drop me a PM, I I no, I yeah, I I sorry, I I really, you know, whatever I say will be a very very calculated guess. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay. Um. Uh, maybe I can I move down. Can I can can we move to Zin? Maybe Zin, you take some of the TAs for I work on the rest. Thank you. Hey. Uh. Thanks. Uh. Peggy. So I think the staff is. Yeah, uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, I'll, I'll begin in the uh, chronological order. So the first one is Hyap Tong. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Hyap Tong currently, I think, uh, not much moment. It's just pulling back just sideways for now. Uh, I think currently the resistance should be around the 13 cents mark over here, which was a previous support. Over here, currently turning to resistance. Then, uh, currently support should be around the 12.3 cents level, which was like a previous, a few previous high swing highs over here, uh, two times over here. Then, uh, there was a swing to around 12.6 cents as well. Yeah, so, I think uh, if price is able to find support over here, could be just forming a range over here consolidation first. Yeah, but overall, currently it's uh, just still good now. Then next one, uh, TDCX. Okay, for TDCX, uh, I think in terms of the trend wise, the big uh, it's quite weak. Uh, after break, uh, there was new lows being made after the breakdown of around six around six eighty. Then I think currently it could be just trading in this wedge over here. So. Um, in terms of support wise, could be around four four sixty or four eighties over here. If, if that is the case, then uh, current resistance could be around six fifty or about six eighty over. Here. So I think for now it's still still trending downwards, and you see whether uh in terms of here whether there's some support coming at this level three levels. And last next one is uh. Beijing okay, for Beijing Airport, currently, I think uh, now it's trading in a downtrend channel. Then um, in terms of near-term support-wise, there's uh, this trend line support. So it's quite possible, quite possibly quite near a support, which is around maybe $4 mark over here. Uh, if it's supported by this trend line, then if it if it uh the next support level could be around three uh around three seventy five over here as well. Yeah, but I think for now maybe four dollars could find some support since there was a previous swing low over here in October last year. There was around three ninety three ninety yeah, so could be quite near a support over here for for this uh for this counter. Okay, then uh next one what's my view for Sam Cop Capital Citrum and Venture. Okay, so first one, Samcorp Industries. Uh, Samcorp, I think for now, it looks bearish to me. Uh, following uh, this uh this breakout over here, but the price didn't it wasn't able to hold around the five sixty mark. So this is important because, um, over here there was a breakout of the resistance, and if it's strong, there there should be a retest of this wedge. Uh, then should be able to find support, but it didn't. It it went down. Uh. 
So it shows that bearish momentum quite strong. Then currently there was a support around 530, then there was a rebound back over here in the 560 mark, a retest, then there was a rejection off. So shows a quite bearish movement over here. Yeah, in terms of the MACD wise, there's also bearish divergence created. So in terms of SAM call, I think um might continue the downwards momentum the, to test some of the support next support level around five dollars or maybe if, yeah close to five dollars over here yeah yeah then i think uh in terms of the weekly chart wise um yeah there's also bearish when uh, divergence or mecd over here then there's recently a few negative crossover yeah so previously um if you look at the previous time it happened there was uh, one time over here this was in 2021, then there was a pullback quite long. Then uh, another time was here in September of last year. Uh, also bearish divergence, and there was a quite a pullback over here. So could be seeing something similar over here. The weakness persists for same call. That's my views. And in terms of uh, next one is Kepler. Okay, Kepler, I think uh looks like it's just really straight for now. Uh, price. Thing is that price still forming a higher low over here it looks around the six sixties and then, uh, currently just moving upwards slightly. I think resistance could be coming in around the seven dollars to seven ten level. So for Kepler looks like just uh still uptrend in the mid term, but just maybe just moving up slowly or range in the short term. And then for Citrum, um. See, Trump, the in terms of the momentum was still pretty good after the breakout over here. Currently, just range trading. Uh, we tested the 14.7 uh, resistance. So, could see some bit of range of pullback for, for now. Then, last one, Venture. I think a lot of people are interested. Um, <clears throat> venture currently, today we have a, if, it, if the price uh, remains over here, we have a potential uh bullish cost over at MACD. Uh in terms of wise currently downtrend channel, but I think there could be some support at the current level, which is around 1270, 1280. The chart wise holds. Then uh this is also a retest of a of a swing low support. This was back in 2020 April. Yeah then last time there was this was also a key support level around 1270. Yeah, so if there's some uh if there's a support over here that could could see some uh bounce, uh then the some resistance is around twelve sorry thirteen uh thirteen twenties over here then followed by possibly uh thirteen sixty over here for venture yeah. Then next one is uh Boeing. Okay, for Boeing currently I think uh there's a read. There was a retest of the breakout, a resistance breakout around the 218 level, uh, and also along this uh trend line support supported. Then uh there was a then back to the resistance at 230 over here. So then price retrace a bit. So I think currently could just maybe move in a bit of a range over here if the, the support over here around 218, 220 still holds. So we might might just see a bit of a chop over here for now. Adobe, next one. Adobe showing good momentum. Uh, mostly in the range for quite about a while, but uh, recently made a new higher high. So if that uh possibly we could see a test of this uh trendline resistance which is, uh is around uh, five hundred seventy. So okay, the resistance could be around five hundred eighty over here. Then. Uh, previously this was a swing high level back in December 2021 as well. So that could be the next resistance point for Adobe if it continues the recent uh, our momentum. Okay, the next one, uh, Singapore Airlines. Okay, you know, Singapore Airlines currently I think just ranging over here at the, the swing low support which is around 685. So if it's, it's holding, then there could be some bounce to then uh, to, to test the near-term resistance level, which is possibly around 
seven dollars over here. Uh, so there was a swing low, then swing low, swing low as well. That could act as a resistance for now. So this for SI, I think not much, maybe just range still. Okay, the next one, uh, Yang Zijiang Shipbuilding. Sorry, oh, uh, sorry, Raffles Medical. Okay, Raffles Medical, uh, quite weak for now. That following a breakdown at one thirty, then uh, price also broke broke below one twenty seven, and actually filled this gap. Also at one twenty three. So over here, uh, yeah, currently price is just holding it over here. So. Might see the downward momentum continue or just a range consolidation over here. Let's see whether the key is whether this one twenty three is able to go. If not, there could be some continuation of the bearish moment. The next support level, this key support level will be around uh, 170 over here. Then um next one you can think sing. Okay, for Genting, currently, I think there's a bounce for now because I started the downtrend channel support again. That's around 57 cents. Current resistance could be around the 90 cent mark over here. Then followed by the uh, upwards of the, the channel resistance at around 92 cents. So these are some possible levels to take note of. The main, the main trend is now this uh, downtrend channel for now, for the midterm. Then next one, uh, Food Empire. Okay, for Food Empire, could be trading in this broadening wedge over here. So price, um, for now, looks like bearish. Uh, possible resistance could be around the 105 level over here, which was also like swing high resistance back then over here. Yeah, then in terms of support wise, uh, see whether the recent lows around one dollar can hold. If not, we could be revisiting some lower supports around like 94 to 95 cents over here. Yeah, so for food and bio looks still bearish for now. Yeah, in this uh technical pattern. Okay, then I'll move on to the three local banks. Uh first one, DBS. Okay, so DBS looks like price is trying to hold above the 320 over here. So is the key level. If that succeeds, then we could possibly see price uh move upwards to try and test some of the recent the recent swing high close to $34 again. Okay, then next one uh UOB. Yeah, UOB just hanging around uh this key zone around 25, 28, 55 to about 27 over here. So yeah, just sideways for now, we see the reaction. Uh, whether it's able to hold this level, then it could possibly move upwards to try and test the swing high around 29.30. If not, it could just come back down to just form a range over here. Then as for OCBC, yeah, something similar as well. Uh, in a midpoint level, yeah, some resistance to be around 12.70 over here for now. Okay, then uh, next one is uh, Escort. Okay, for Escort, um, broke the, the swing low support around the $1 mark last week. So, could be revisiting the next support key support level, which is around uh, 94 cents or 95 cents zone over here. Yeah, so, over now, the momentum is still quite weak for Escort. And for next one is Delphi. Okay, for Delphi, I think it's a very broad uh, range over here. So just a uh, key support 118. Yeah, but uh, showing signs of weakness, we see lower highs being formed over here. There was a double top over here, then the lower high around 128. So that's some very signals. Yeah. So if uh 118 can hold, then the next support level could be closer to about 109, 111, this zone over here. Okay, then next one the prime US read. 
So, okay, prime currently be testing the swing lows around the 14 cent mark. So, currently just sideways over here. So, we see whether uh, this is able to hold and whether see some rebound. Uh, short term wise, resistance could be from 15 cents to about 15.5 cents for now. Okay, then next one, uh, Capital of Pacific. Okay, this one uh, also break down the range consolidation. So this was from about 26 to 27 cents, so about 30, 31.5 cents. So the range was about um, 4, 4, to 5, 4 to 5 cents. Yeah, so with that, we see projection downwards uh, between 22 cents. So currently it's around here. So price, yes, yeah, see whether there's some support coming at this level. But yeah, it's still very bearish overall. Okay, the next one, um, ESR logos. Okay, ESR logos, I think, um, still finding resistance anytime where every time it hits up this downtrend resistance line so recently price uh unable to get above this 33 cents level which was a previous support and it just it just test resistance so price came back down now currently looks like we'll retest um possibly a retest of the 29 to about 30 cents area with the this support level over here yeah, so I think it's just continuing to trade this big downtrend channel since uh this was since 2021. Yeah. Okay, then uh next one CICT. Okay, CICT currently I think uh trying to find some support at this uptrend support line over here, then uh yeah, see whether if the key will be price or whether price is able to uh hold above 192 this level this level here. If it does then that could some there could be some uh upside to try and have some levels like 195, 196, then followed by you know, closer to the two dollars mark again. And yeah, then that could this could be a big range over here. And Thai Bev, next one. Um, I think I think still in the range over here. The bigger pattern is that uh, it's still, it's still kept in this uh, this wedge over here. Yeah, then in terms of the short term, it is very range about still. Yeah, so you see a breakout above this fifty nine cents mark, and holding above it, then I think that we could see some potential uh upside. If not, it will just be kept in this range still for Thai Bev. Okay, then next one, uh, UMS. Okay, UMS, uh, following a break of this uptrend channel over here has been quite strong. Currently, could be encountering some resistance at this level, which is on uh, 124, 125 was a previous resistance level. Today, we saw some, looks like some resistance getting in. Uh, if it continues the upside, the next key resistance will, at one, will be at 130 over here. So over here, could see some pullback. If it's some resistance acting, then we could see a bit of a consolidation take place for UMS in the short term. The current support could be around at 120 over here. 119 to about 120. Okay, then next on uh, Disney. Okay, Disney is quite weak over here. Uh, recently, there was a breakdown below this a uh, key horizontal support around the $85 mark. So if that also broke below this wedge, uh, this trend line support over here, yeah, just very bearish. So with that, if this continues, we could potentially, potentially see a retest of maybe the $79 mark. So this was actually the COVID lows over here. Yeah, so for this needs very weak. It still remains uh, weak for now. Okay, then I'll move on to some Hong Kong names, uh, 3032, uh, HSI Management Technique for the index. Uh, currently, I think 
uh, sitting at this level with 4.2 over here. Uh, if it upside continues, you could see a test of maybe 4.35 over here, another level. Then uh, next one is 10 cent. Okay, 10 cent also currently is, uh, there, was a, there was support coming in at the 320 mark, so currently just a bit of a range. Uh, if it continues the upside, could test the, uh, the next level around 340, there's one level. Then also the next uh, there's the next resistance could be around the 350 level, which is this downtrend resistance line as well. And uh, for JD, yeah, a bit similar to Tencent, uh, forming a range at a support level, which is around 130 in JD's case. So if this holds, there could be some potential rebound to try and test some the uh, near-term resistance around 140 for JD. And last but not least, we'll, sorry, uh, the next one will be Ping An. So Ping An uh, recently, uh, it looks like a retest of a key previous support recently. So this could act as a resistance around the, this is about $48, $49. Then the next resistance could be around the, uh, this price gap feeling at around $51. Could be some resistance coming. Next one, it will be Alibaba. So Alibaba rebounded from the channel support. Then uh, currently testing a previous support that was broken. This is at 93. So this is the level to we'll see whether there's some resistance coming in. The next resistance to take note of potentially is at 96. This uh, downtrend channel resistance. Then close to this swing high as well. Okay, TA for TSM as well as uh, AMD. Okay, for TSM, I think uh, price rebounded from the blue color channel support. This is still resisted by the like, channel uh, support which was being broken down over here. So it looks like, um, in terms of price action, one looks like still forming a bit of a range for now. So you could see a bit of a consolidation where resistance likely will come in at around 95 to 97. Then uh, support could be around 91 to about 93 over here. Yeah, so we see some range form. Then for AMD, AMD is a bit of a range as well. Uh, price rebounded from the level at 102, which is this channel support. Then currently testing a previous support, 108. But here, some resistance could come in at 111 next. Uh, if you test the, if it rejects from this uh, channel resistance as well as this recent swing high over here. Yeah, so this could just tighten in the range over here in the short term as well. The next one, uh, Samudra shipping. The Samudra uh, formed a range over here uh, after getting support around the 71 cents level. Resistance is, will be this 76 cents. So the key for any rebound will be to to clear this 76 cents level over here, which is also uh, this uptrend support line as well. So see whether it can get back above. Uh, if it does, then we we'll see a potential test of this downtrend resistance line, which is maybe price could go up towards the 82 cent mark over here where there's some resistance. This is provided, uh, it can recover over here. And then for Maple Tree Industrial Trust, um, the range over the big range which is still holding the price recently looks like it's holding at two above two twenty seven this level. So potentially there's a chance that go on and test the two thirty four level over here again uh, to continue the big range consolidation.
Okay, then city developments also currently looks like a bit of a range. Uh, the support over here is still holding around 660. So uh, short-term resistance could come in around the six close to seven dollars over here. There could be some resistance. And followed by seven, uh about seven fifteen. for Sing Xiong. I think uh yeah there was a breakdown of this uptrend support line currently price testing a swing low support at fund fifty two so see whether he's able to hold uh then short term resistance will be this one fifty seven level uh, which was being broken down and so in the short term why Sing Xiong still quite weak over here then if it holds then we probably just see a range consolidation for now. If it doesn't, then that could visit the next support level, which is around 150 over. Okay, then uh, T on the three major US taxes. So it's okay, I start with Dow, the Dow. Okay, for Dow currently, um, Last, last week, we rebounded off this trend line support. She was around the 34k mark. And the good thing is that we got back above this key level, 34.6k. Uh, yeah. Then could be seeing some resistance coming around the 35k mark, 35.1k, which was this support over here. Yeah. So I think for this week, maybe we see if there's some resistance, then maybe we see a bit of a range as yes, consolidation for, for Dow this week. And for S and P, yeah, S and P, uh, breakout of this downtrend resistance line on Tuesday with this very long, uh, bullish candle. Currently, we testing a uh, resistance, which is this uh, previous support at four five three zero level. So, uh, could see some resistance over here, but uh, if, if we do move a bit higher, could close out this price gap around four five seven zero. Then there will be another resistance as well. So for this week, could see a bit of a range, possibly this week. Yeah. And in terms of Nasdaq, Nasdaq looks like a retest of uh, this fourteen thousand level, the key a uh, psychological level as well, previous support. And over here, you can see price action wise looks like some resistance and maybe some sideways action of it. And we move out a bit higher to close out the price gap around the 14.2k level. But for now, I think um, looks like uh, maybe just some consolidation is like yeah, you have this uh, trend line resistance over here as well. So we could just move the, down a little, just consolidate. Anti or Franken and EM. Okay, Franken recently there was a strong move. Uh, but I think currently could face some resistance. Uh, tested this downtrend resistance line today, where it was a one o six one seven level. Yeah, so with that could see a little bit of a range consolidation. For now, support is around the one o three one o four level. We have, we have this uptrend support line. Uh, as well as this previous resistance over here, this key, this level. So we'll see whether this level is able to hold for some, uh, try to break out. If not, then you could see maybe price start to lose a bit of momentum. Is If 103 is unable to hold at this, over here this way. Okay, then AEM. Okay, AM currently we tested a prior support over here, which is around 355. Uh could see some sideways action or, or consolidation. Yeah. If it continues, but if it does continue to reset our momentum again, then the next resistance will be around 370 in this level. Okay, then 
the next one are LH and okay, LH and uh there was some a uh, retest of the the, the previous uh, strong resistance around the 33 cent mark now acting as a support. Currently doing a bit of a range for now. So currently the resist there's some resistance around the 34 cent, 34.5 cents mark to about 35.5 cents over here. So could see some a bit of a range consolidation for LHN if the support at 33 cents is able to hold. Yeah. And uh so UMG, uh, I'm not sure which counter you're going to, maybe you can type in the chat box again. Okay. And then I'll go through uh, Capital Land Invest first. Uh, capital Land Invest, still quite weak. Uh, there was a range over here, breakdown, and currently looks like it's just a retest taking place at uh, 3.2 over here. So if the the, the bearish momentum continues could see resistance coming in and pull back again. Uh, then short term support would be around 3.15 over here. Okay, then for Simtel uh, price just uh, retested. This level 237 prices maybe sideways over here, possibly. Uh, is there some price support? Uh, price support over here at 2, 237 to about 240. That could act as a resistance for now. Okay. Then for UMS, the um, UMS. Yeah, just now covered. Uh, yeah, we tested this one twenty four resistance. Okay, next one. Uh, can Yang Zhejiang break up one seven? Let's see. The Yang Zhejiang currently okay one seven. Yeah, seventy is is level. So, in for now maybe a bit difficult. Uh, since there was a. It tested the level last end of last week, and today we had you had a, a break below that level. So currently testing one sixty five, this swing goes. So could there's there's some could be some support at this level, but for now one seventy. See whether if there's some support and retracement back towards, then see whether there's a test. One sixty nine, one seventy would be likely be a short term resistance for now. Yeah, for Yang Zhejiang. So we know the whether it can test one seventy or not. Sure, I need to see the the rebound move if there's any over here. Okay, then Nvidia. This one. Nvidia, I think a uh, strong strong momentum. Uh, then recently the it cleared this uh four eighty prior resistance over here. So we had a closing above then on Friday. It looks like a retest. So if this is able to hold, I think that could be some continuation of the upside to try to maybe move towards uh the trend line resistance, which is at 510 possibly. Where you can see over here a few times uh, where he has respected his trend line resistance. And so for NVIDIA, it's still strong as long as uh price is able to hold over 4 and okay, then for Baba US. If Baba US um currently rebounded from the this support tanky, currently it looks like a midway midway level at 95, 96. So in, if it does continue its upside, uh it could potentially test towards the 100 level over here again, the the, the wedge resistance as well as the swing highs over here. Yeah, so yeah, let's see how it goes for Baba. And then uh, Uber Uber currently there was a there was, recently there was a breakout of this range over here at 45.50 then price went downwards so there could be a test of the recent resistance at 48 
49 if it does continue the recent momentum. And for Tesla, okay, Tesla, there was a retest of this. There was a retest of this. Um, 250, 255 level prior key support over here. So it has a resistance for now. Um, then for now, I think support it will be around 241, 243, this level. So prior sub swing low as well as this swing low and this resistance was cleared. So I think if this holds, we could see maybe some range form over here for the time being. Next one, uh, Intel. Uh, Intel looks like a retesting their swing high around 30, close to 37 over here. Yeah, that could be a triple top formation if it doesn't clear. Maybe it just looks a bit more of a range of here. In uh, Hong Kong land. Okay, Hong Kong land. It looks like a bit of a range for now. So there was a support at around 345, then resistance around 365 over here. So yeah, so it looks like just forming a range after getting out of this downtrend channel over here. So I think that might actually continue unless we see unless we see a break upwards of this key resistance or a break downward of the support. Okay, next one, uh, DFI. Okay, DFI, I think, still quite bearish. We see a break of the support 250s, and there was, recently there was a retest. So, if we do continue downwards momentum, we could maybe see the retest of the support over at around the 230s over here again. Yeah. So, still, still quite weak in the, this downtrend for DFI. Okay, then I'll go through. The last two counters, let's see, uh, Apple. Apple currently uh, could be encountering some resistance at the near term, which is on 191 this as it closes out the gap. And this was like a prior spot. Yeah. And short term support is around 186. So if that happens, we could see maybe some or resistance and maybe a uh, pullback or a bit of a range consolidation. The next one is Microsoft. Okay, Microsoft, there was a retest of the 328, this prior support, then we see there was a resistance. So currently we are, there still could be some resistance coming in around the 330 level over here. Uh, so maybe I'm expecting a bit of range as consolidation as well for, for Microsoft. Okay, next, uh, I see a question on BIT. I'll just cover that as well. Uh, so this is the, the process Bitcoin uh, ETF. So recently there was a, it's a break. There was a breakdown of this uptrend support line. So bearish then um, retest of the, the swing lows at $13, so it was the June lows. So if this see is in deep, we see if this deep, this is able to hold. Um, then maybe just a uh, some sort of uh, uh take care bounce to take place. Yeah. Maybe some resistance will come in at fourteen forty for now. Yeah. So that's all from from me for TA today. Uh, I'll pass back the time to maybe Peggy if there's anything to add on. Thanks. Thanks, Zing. I think there's no more in the chat group. There's a question on Chile, but we don't cover Chile uh, out from Singapore office, so maybe we, we can't give an adequate, a good answer to that. Uh, I think that's all we have for today. Thank you, everyone, for your for dialing in and spending your afternoon with us. Thank you very much. I hope to see you again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.